All right, so in this video, I'll be actually continuing on the last video I posted uh, about a proof where I'm showing that a set W of a vector space V is a subspace if and only if span W is equal to W. So uh, I, gave, uh, I gave some pretty detailed proof concepts on how to show, first of all, uh, an if and only if, so that's my if and only if part. Also, the equality of sets, because I, I first started with the, 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 the first direction of the proof, uh, where I assumed that W was a subspace of V, and I want to prove that span W is equal to W. So I, I uh, explained the equality of sets, so we need to show that A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A, to show that A is equal to B, where A and B are sets. And then to show that A is a subset of B, you need to show, so to prove A is a subset of B, you need to take an arbitrary element in A and show that the same element, the same element is in, in B. Um, so then I showed that span of W is a subset of, of W and that W is a subset of span of W. So that's the first part of my proof. Uh, so if, if, if you just came here to, to look at the second part of the proof, then, then here it is. If not, then just go ahead and go back to that video and, uh, and check it out. So the, the second part of my proof is going to be the, uh, the backwards direction, where I'm going to assume that span of W is equal to W, and I want to show that W is a subspace of V. So let me actually write that down. So, um, so we usually write the backwards direction like that. So um, I'm assuming, so I assume that span of W, span of W is equal to W. And I want to show, I want to show that W is a subset of V. Uh, sorry, not a subset, a subspace. So this is shorthand for subspace. So remember how to show subspace. Uh, for subspace proofs, you need to show that, first of all, zero, in this case belongs to W, that uh, given X and Y belong to W, that X plus Y belongs to W, and given that X belongs to W and C belongs to R, real numbers that is, then CX belongs to W. Right, so that's that's my subspace proof in a in a nutshell, basically. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first part. So uh, show that show that zero belongs to W W. So how I can do this? How I can do this? Well, I can start with zero and its relation to span of w. So how how is zero, the zero vector, related related to span span of w. Okay? Well, let's see. Let's think about let's think about span for a second. So we know that span of w span of w is equal to uh, all the sets, all the set, the set of all linear combinations um, of vectors in in the set W, right? So, two n belongs to the real numbers, and one n belongs to them. So, this is the definition of span of W. Well, let's see. Can can we actually say that the zero vector belongs to the span of W? Does zero belong to span of W? Well, when you think about it, there, there's nothing wrong with saying since A1 to AN are all real numbers, it's not like you're forbidden, it's not like you're forbidden to say that A1, A2, A3 until AN are the same, are the same uh, scalar, right? That's still a linear combination. If you have like let's say if you have uh, three, 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 um, and you're saying that that's the linear combination of uh, three, 
one zero zero, then three zero one zero plus three zero zero one. Right, this is perfectly legit, right? Because you have the same scalar, different vectors, um, and clearly three 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 is a linear combination of one zero 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 one one zero 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 one zero and zero zero one. So the same thing can be said for an arbitrarily large or um, arbitrarily or just an arbitrary span of W. If if we set if we set all so all the scalars scalars uh, a1 through an to zero. If we all set them to zero, right? So we'll have so we we'll have a1 w1 plus a2 w2 plus dot plus an wn, and we'll we'll set them all to zero, right? Zero w2 plus dot plus zero wn, right? So these are all scalars. So it's, it doesn't doesn't do anything that they're the same. Well, we know, we know, clearly we know that this is going to be the zero vector because zero times anything, zero times any vector is a zero vector. And adding a bunch of zero vectors together just gives you the zero vector, right? Okay, well, what we've just showed here, we've just showed, so we've just showed that zero, showed that the zero vector can be expressed, can be expressed, can be expressed as a linear combination, linear combination, because this is, to be fair, a linear combination with vectors in W, right? W1 is in W, W2 is in W, Wn is in 0. So it's, it's a linear combination of vectors in W, vectors in the set W. So, so, um, by definition of span of W, by definition of span of W, so by definition of span of W, span of W, we can say that zero belongs to span of W. Zero belongs to span of W because it can be represented as a linear combination, as a linear combination of the vectors in W. That's that's a whole idea, a whole definition behind uh, span. Uh, and span of spanning, spanning a set, right? So zero belongs to span of W, okay? But here's where our assumption comes in. Our assumption was that our assumption was that span of W is equal to W. So span of W is equal to W. So that means that zero belongs to span of W, and that's the first part of our proof. That's the first part of our subspace proof here, where zero belongs to W, right? So fair enough here, you basically just have to, to think about it a bit. So how can I, how can I relate the, the zero vector with W? Well, I sort of go indirectly by using span of W, and I try to see if I can make up a linear combination where I get, where I get the zero vector. And since I can, since I can, since I can set all the, the scalars to zero, I get the zero vector belonging to the span of W, which is equal to W. Okay, now the second part of the proof, the second part of the proof, second part of the proof actually isn't that tricky. So I assume that X and Y belong to W. And now my goal, so my goal is to show that X plus Y, X plus Y belong to W, right? Well. Let, let's start with x plus y. So x plus y can be written. So I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to add a scalar. x plus y can be written as 1 times x plus 1 times y, right? There's nothing wrong with writing this. This is a scalar, and this is a scalar. So that belongs to the real numbers. That belongs to the real numbers. And x and y by my assumption here, these belong to the set W. Okay, well, what do we notice? We notice that X plus Y, X plus Y has just been, uh, has just been expressed as a linear combination. So can be expressed, can be expressed as a linear combination because this is clearly a linear combination. I have 
a scalar times my vector x, which is in w, and a scalar times my vector y, which is also in w. So that's a linear combination. So it can be expressed as a linear combination of vectors, of vectors in w, right? Because x and y both belong to w, okay? So what that means, what that means by definition, so by definition, this means that x plus y, x plus y belong to the span of w. Because if something can be represented as a linear combination of vectors in W, that means automatically that that something, that element, that vector, whatever, belongs to the span of that set. Automatically, by definition of the span. So since x plus y belongs to the span of W, but again, we know, we know from our assumption that span of W is equal to W. So, so span of W equal to W, and that means that x plus y, x plus y, belongs to w. And that proves the second part of our subspace proof, right? So it's pretty similar to the first part. I just use the fact that um, my sort of, I use the intermediate or indirect fact that the, the vector I was trying to get at belonged to span of w. So here, I do the same thing, I do the same thing here. And I know that span of W is equal to W, so indirectly, X plus Y belongs to W. And finally, finally, the third part of my proof, so given, given X belonging to W, and C belonging to the real numbers, right? My goal here, my goal, so my goal is to show, show that CX belongs to the loop. That's my goal. Okay, well, it's it's pretty much the same concept as before. So um, this is actually even a bit more obvious. So CX, whoops, I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. CX can be written as, now I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I'm literally not going to change anything. I'm just going to maybe change the color. C times X, right? Where C is a scalar. Now this is kind of this is kind of dumb. This might seem dumb, but I, I just want to emphasize what each thing uh, is. So C belongs to the real numbers, and X belongs to W. Okay, but what you've just noticed, what you've just noticed, is that I've expressed my vector C X as a linear combination of X. Right? It's like saying one 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 is equal to 1 times 1, 1, 1. So it's allowed to say that 1, 1, 1 is a, com is a linear combination of 1, 1, 1. So something can be a linear combination of itself. That's, that's, perfectly, that's perfectly allowed, right? So in this case, in this case, uh, I'm just multiplying x, x by a certain scalar c. So um, let, let's say, for example, for example, for example, say, for example, uh, c is equal to 2. And we have the vector x, 1, 1, 1, right? So uh, 2x is actually 2 times 1, 1, 1, which is actually 2, 2, 2, right? But I can write 2, 2, 2 as 2 times 1, 1, 1, okay? So 2, 2, 2 is actually a linear combination of 1, 1, 1 using using the scalar 2, or in, a, in other words, the scalar C. So that means that CX is actually written as a linear combination of C. So just pretend, pretend, let's, let's remove some of this. Just pretend that CX was a whole vector. So pretend that, so pretend that CX was equal to U, and that I was writing U is equal to C times X. Then clearly you would say that U is a linear combination. So U is a linear combination, combination of X. Okay. Well, so that means that U, that means that U, which is actually C of X, U, which is actually C of X, belongs to the span of W. Right? 
u belongs to the span of w by definition of span because if I say that something can be expressed as linear combination of vectors of w, I know I keep repeating this, but this is an important concept, concept then that means that that something, that element, belongs to the span of that set. So u belongs to the span of w. But what is u really? u is actually cx. So cx belongs to the span of w. And we know, we know from our assumption, again, from right over here, we know from right over here that span of w is equal to w. Okay, so cx belongs to the span of w, which is equal to w. So from here, from here, we can just conclude, we can conclude that cx belongs to w. So, so what I started with, what I started with was given x belongs to w, cx belongs to r, and what I proved is that cx belongs to w. So that's the third part of my proof. So by one, two, and three, I've shown that w is a subspace of v. So that concludes the second part, the second part of this pretty long, this pretty long proof where it was to show that a subset of w uh, is a, a subset of, sorry, that a subspace of v, no, again, sorry, show that a subset w of a vector space v is a subspace if and only if span of w is equal to w, right? So I showed, I showed my first direction. So this is my first direction. I showed it in two steps. Again, I need to show that they were both subsets. And then I went over here. I showed my second direction, showing that it was a subspace. So now um, I've shown that W is a subset of V. So usually it's nice to write something at the end. So since uh, I have shown that span of W, span of W is equal to W, if and only if W is a subset of V, uh, the proof is complete. Proof is complete. Yeah, maybe I could have worded that better, but you get the point. You usually need to write something at the end to uh, to basically say that you're done the proof. Okay, well that concludes the video. The second video, the second part of the video on this this pretty long proof.